Association. I'm Chris Garlock, Managing Editor of the AGA E-Journal, joined once again by Michael Redmond, Nine Don Professional. Today, Michael will be reviewing the fourth game of the AlphaGo Zero versus AlphaGo Master Series. As always, before we get started, I want to thank all our AGA members, and if you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. So, Michael, DeepMind's AlphaGo Zero played chess this week. Did, uh, did you see the news? Yeah, yeah. it was quite amazing. <laughs> um, I was most impressed at the speed, of, of course, that it mastered the game. Um, and, of course, Zero was a lot faster than the previous AlphaGo programs. So mm -hmm. um, they're perfecting the system here and it's showing in this, the speed that they um, process these new things. Yeah, and I guess they and also did uh, Shogi, I think, uh, yeah. after that, right? right? Even quicker. Yeah, yeah even that was quick. amazing. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, our jobs, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Should we be worried? I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to talk to, uh, to Demis and the guys. Anyway, we're very happy uh, to have any new viewers from the chess community, uh, and we welcome you to the Go community. So, uh, all right, let's jump into game four. Uh, we've been getting lots and lots of, of tremendous feedback. I think people are still, a lot of people are still planning their Friday nights. Uh, getting that pizza and and, and uh, doing that. So thanks for doing that. Of course, uh, game four. What's the uh, what's the overview on game four? Yeah, well, okay. In this set, in the even games, zero has black, so it's a game with zero with black, and it's going to be the same opening. Um, and I think Master made a mistake fairly early in the game, and it was supposed to be an easy game for zero, but um, then zero made it really interesting. Right. <laughs> so, um, there were point, points in the game where I think Master had a chance to win. It was a big fight towards the end. Okay, cool. All right, let's take a look at it. So um, here we go with the same opening. Um, Zero always jumps into the through three point. Um, there are some young pros who are trying this out, but basically um, they're pretty tough players anyway mm -hmm. in Japan. That is. So, so um, uh, it's not really a good test of the three three invasion. <laughs> because they, they're probably players who would be winning anyway. Right. Um, so, so far it's the same. Um, and now now this move. So this is where Zero um, does play at A or B sometimes. Okay. So there's two, two different moves it can play. Actually, I think this move is uh, the move it lost twice with. I lost two of its games with this pincer. So we'll, not this game though, but it, it um, this is maybe the less less successful move i think it hmm. has a um this particular opening has a 50 50 um winning percentage for zero so that's really bad for zero yeah um and again um master pretty much likes this move most it, it looks a bit too lopsided for white to be jumping into the three three point at a mm -hmm. um too many stones on the low on the lower side um just to get into a, I, I did make the variation, so why don't we just show you? Um, it turns out something like this. And you can see that it's a, a normal Joseki there on the lower left, but um, white is very low, and the lower side is open on the side too, so it's, it's not a really important area. Um, and black has a nice moyo in the upper left, so I, I like that for black. And um, Master obviously didn't even play it in one game, didn't play it at all. So mm -hmm. almost every time it's playing the double kakari, um, depending on the pincer, of course. And with this pincer, I think it played the double kakari every time. That stone, uh, the the pincer also has a nice relationship uh, to the to the formation on the right, right? It looks like it's a good balance there, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even as it is, and and especially um, just to go back to that previous diagram here, when Black plays that final move um, in the upper left corner, it becomes a very solid territory like position there on the left side. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a very good balance on the left side when, when black adds a move to it also. Um, and now um, zero has a choice of, um, these would be the two, two most popular moves. Um, but again, it's a case where black would like to sort of induce white to be playing on the lower side because black wants to build on, build on the left side. So if black plays this way, actually, Although it looks like black's playing towards the left, the result will be that um, white gets to play on the left because white's going to answer that move. Mm -hmm. And something like this, black is 
wax wall is actually pointing to the right, which is in this case with the marked white stone there sort of in the way. Um, Black's wall is pointing in the wrong, wrong direction. So this is not what Black wants to do. And so Black plays here. And actually at this point, I think a human player would say White has a number of choices. Mm -hmm. uh, like White could jump into the corner. Um, maybe I'll be doing that in a different um, different game. But I, I made this variation just to show um, probably what White doesn't want to do. Like if White plays like this and um, Black manages to sort of push White towards the right like this, then it's a good direction to play for Black. So this yeah. is the idea behind Black's play. I mean, white, so white, gets, white gets really cramped on the right now. I mean, that's right. Yeah, too many stones close to that. That wall on the, in the lower right is pretty strong already, so white sure. doesn't really need to put a lot of stones next to it. Yeah, that's the move I like. And this move that white, that master plays every time it gets into this position in the lower left is very unorthodox. <laughs> um, like, it's, it's not a joseki. And just because master is playing it every time, it doesn't mean that people should... Um, Sort of memorize this sequence because it, um, it actually I I think it's working fairly well in this board position, but it's um, that's just because the lower side in general is not so important, right. and so it's it's particular to this this uh, this board position. It's, it it only works maybe in this one board position, and so um, in game number two I think I talked about a mm -hmm. number of variations at this mm -hmm. point. So I'll leave it in this case and. And this move indeed is it's the yeah. good suji move. It's the good shape move. Yeah. Um, so this whole um, sequence here seems pretty reasonable to me. And white has sacrificed three stones, but is getting thickness towards the the well the left side, the left side of the board. So that general area is going to be white's thickness, whereas black's black gets some points by capturing the three stones, but black's extra value of the thickness is pointed to the right, which, uh, as I've said a number of times already, the right is not such an important area. Exactly. It's on the side. So, um, and yeah, um, so even though black is pointing in the wrong direction, locally it's good for black. So um, when you add that all in, I'd say it's an even result. Okay. Um, and so this has happened uh, with a pincer at black B and also a pincer at black A. So it, uh, the difference here is that in this board position, master plays here every time. So mm -hmm. since black has a stone there on the third line, I think master sees it um, important to uh, make a living shape. Like um, I might just add a variation here. If white plays somewhere else, for instance, like this would be a nice place to play. Um, black can push through here. Um, and uh, for instance, could cut here. And with that stone on the third line, you can see black connecting up on the on the side. Ooh, this, would, yeah. well, this would be bad for white, obviously. Terrible. Um, or otherwise black would be able to capture the corner. So this is one of the things that white is preventing with that move there. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. So it seems reasonable. And black plays here. This is a point where um, this was the only game where Zero played this move, and mm -hmm. I marked B. Mark B is where it usually plays, and you know that's a joseki that um, playing that attachment in the upper right corner is a joseki that Zero likes to play. Mm. The, the the KJ uh, version likes it too. Um, internet, I, I see that someone um, told me how to pronounce KJ. Yeah, I only but sent you the I'm one. There was say, there there were a bunch of people. <laughs> 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 well, we, we'll get to that. So. I just I just sent you the most detailed one. Okay, but they're uh, trying to be they're trying to be helpful. It's it's all it's yeah. all well intentioned. Uh, it was, we it we appreciate sense. it. Very good advice. Yes. Um, so this is unusual, um, and it's sort of interesting. It's it's a more defensive move than making it territory because the upper right is not yet black's territory. There's still some potential for white to jump in, um, but of course. Uh, black stone there on the side is a bit um, is being uh, threatened by white's thickness. There, white has mm -hmm. some fairly solid thickness in the lower left corner, so it, it makes sense that black is protecting there, and white plays on the side. So um, this is a very natural. It almost looks like a human game. I, yeah, it. it, uh, it I'm, I'm assuming it's going to get crazy any minute now, right? 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the timing for me to say it looks like a human game, you know. Right. So uh, this move, again, is a very natural move that builds up the moyo on the upper side. And this is uh, something that it already looks a bit premature to me. Yeah. Like, this, this is one way that white can go about making trouble inside black's territory. It's the game move? It's the game move. Wow. Um, but uh, if I was playing with white, I would be more worried about um, the upper side, which looks like it's going to spread out into the center. Yeah. So I would be starting on the upper side, usually. Like. So um, let's see. I, I would maybe um, play something like this. Okay. Um, White, white has enough room to make a life. And like if white can get a very good position there on the upper side, then it doesn't matter if black gets the upper left corner. So white would uh, white would be um, happy playing moves like this, which would, um, for instance, let's just say something like this happens. Um, this would be a good result for white because white would be living there and putting pressure on black stones on the right, um, even if black does get the upper left corner territory. So this would sure. be what I would be aiming at. Um, that was just, um, I'm not going to guarantee this is what's going to happen, though. Um, there would probably be some complications there. You think? Yeah. So White jumps in here. Um, now, this locally, this is a move that actually works. White's looking at, um, White's looking at a, let's see. Um, White's, White's looking at a jump here. Mm -hmm. So if Black, um, let's just add a variation. Um, so like if Black plays something like this, then White doesn't have enough room to live. But white would be able to make more trouble with a move like this. And right. It would be very difficult for black to kill the whole thing. Um, so black plays on top. This is a reasonably thick move. And white, and so this is the follow-up move that white has. So mm. this is um, uh, looks good. Um, for instance, if black plays here um, and white extends here, then black will cut and white will play here. And um, uh, we can see white's getting enough room to live in mm -hmm. the corner. So this is one way white can live. Um, in the game, black plays here, white plays here, and black plays here. Um, and this is actually a very good move. And white's going to be able to live in the corner. And this is the point where master uh, seemed to get a bit greedy. Um, so I'm going to show you, first I'm going to show you what I think Master should have done. Okay. So White pushes through here. At this point, this is a forcing move. So Black covers, and White just plays everything in order. like, And then can live. And so starting with A, White can make a, um, an easy life there. And um, I'm not sure I would play this whole sequence myself, because it mm -hmm. does give... Um, black a lot of thickness, and now black's going to play something towards the center. It's this big moyo that black has in the center. Um, but it is a lot of territory that white's taken away. So this is actually, it's a feasible way of playing. Um, although I might not play it myself, it is a move that white could have Be because Because you feel the invasion is premature, yeah? I, I had that feeling, but you know, it is taking away something like 20, 25 points of black territory. It's big. It's big. So it's it's a way so, uh, it can be played this way, but that's not what Master did. So what Master did was it played the the Hane here, um, and this sort of changes things. It, it yeah. changes things that, um, and then it cuts here, and um, what's it, it's going on? Something different here, you see. <laughs> um, and then it covers here. So white's heading towards a co. So white still had a chance. For instance, at this point, white could have white could have played from the corner, and it would have been uh, sure. sort of similar, right, not, right, not yeah, as yeah. good as other, but similar. Right. But you can see master is heading, trying to uh, do something different. So white white plays here, and master is trying to make a co here. Uh huh. And this is okay because white has co threats, but the co threats are all bad moves. Um, so even though white can uh, potentially win the call, it's not going to be very good for white. Can you just show folks just just show folks some of the bad moves so they have a sense of? And well, first of all, I'm showing um, zero played this move, which is really interesting. Um, <laughs> and it's a good move actually, and I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm going to try to show the difference. Like if black just cuts here, mm -hmm. this is the code that's white's going to start the call from this side. 
And this call is going to be much more immediate when white wins it. So like if we have something like this happen, when white wins this call, those black stones are going to be taken off the board. Yeah. So that's going to be, um, so the outside black wool is not as strong as, like the upper side is not as much territory. Uh, why don't we just, um, okay, let's, let, let's finish that off. Uh, so now, um, when this kind of thing happens, white has invasions like this. Gotcha. And a lot of thickness in that corner to make that work. Mm. So let's look at the code that, um, that zero headed towards. This way, uh, white has to play here, then black plays a code. And now, um, now it's really crazy because master just quit playing in that area. <laughs> <laughs> but playing the code is not really that good anyway, um, because in this case, now you, you're going to see that the black stones are going to be left on the board when white finishes the code like this. And so although black might, might not play it immediately, black has this forcing move which makes the upper side very, very um, different from what it was before. Oh, that is clever. So uh, so it's this this comparison, this, this where the upper side looks really breezy and open, and this one where black has it completely closed off. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, so I jumped a few moves ahead. Black can continue like this on the right side. And black, this co-threat that black has it's a co-threat that is, um, the co-threat that Black played at D was a reasonable move in itself. So it's not as if Black is um, playing any bad moves. Right. And um, all of the moves that White played with um, B and so were bad co-threats. They were bad moves mm. because they're giving, they're um, improving Black's position there in the, in the lower left. And so with this damage that White's doing to itself, uh, with the co-threats and the fact that um, black was very easy for black to find a good co-threat makes this very good for black and it's, it's already bad for white now. Mm. Um, so, so actually playing the code isn't really working for white. And you had a question? Well, it's not, I mean, it's, it, lo it looks bad. I'm just saying it looks, it looks bad. It, it looks it, bad it, for white. I, I guess my question, I mean, is it's, it's not a game over bad, but it's just, it's, it, it just, as a human player, it just feels, ugh, right? It's, it's pretty bad. Okay. Like, um, the, the, I think that the um, AI would give it, um, give Black a score of something like 60, 65 at least. Mm. Mm. Uh, and, you know, um, that's an advantage. Maybe not um, the end of the game, but it's pretty, uh, a pretty big advantage. Wow. Yeah, did the whole th like that's supposed to be winning percent the p potential to win the winning uh -huh. percentage, um, but when um, an AI like Deep Zen or AlphaGo gets to something like above 70, 70 a value of seventy, then um, it's usually going to win the game. After that, there, it's, right? It's like it's going to win almost one hundred percent of the time anyway. So I guess, you know, when we're talking about the, you know, is the invasion premature, you say, well, it's a way to play and it, it does, you know, definitely take away a lot of points. But then the way that it actually gets played out, it does, you it's, know, it, it doesn't it, seem to be working. Like, no, um, no. And the fact that um, Master plays away at this point. Right. It, it sort of looks like it's um, it's a change of plan, you might say. Mm. Um, or it's not, it, it doesn't seem to be agreeing with the previous moves that white plays away like this. Um, but as I showed you, playing the co isn't really working either. And so already there's, um, it looks like there's been some kind of a miscalculation by master. Maybe it was a, maybe it was an AI pair go game. That's, that, that. <laughs> who think you, who do you think the pair was? Oh, I. <laughs> I'm just making this stuff up. I mean, don't I mean, but seriously, I mean, you you do see that in pair go where somebody will start something and and then I'll go, yeah, well, you started that invasion. That that's that's your invasion to deal with. I'm gonna go over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, just to go back a bit uh, mm. again, um, I'll I'll tell you, I'll show you again. Was it this variation? No, um, it was. This one, yeah. Mm. This is this is the way I would have played yeah. after dating. I would have played this way. So the comparison it's, with this and what is happening in the game is is quite. Um, it looks bad for white. Like yeah. black just adds a stone in here, and so this is um, again white did get to play two moves on the upper side. So it's not like this again is not the end of the game. 
It's, right. it's still right, quite right. a little bit. I'd say black has an advantage at this point. Okay. And you can see the way black finished that off is very nice because even if white starts to co now, it's not going to be a living shape. So black just kills the left side and then can capture the other side. Mm. So there's nothing, nothing there left for white. And so white continues on. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a move that Zero likes to play sometimes. I mean, Master likes to play it. Um, and uh, incidentally, Deep Zen Go likes to play it too. Hmm. Uh, and I don't think human players really hurry to play this move because sometimes, sometimes white can play a, um, a Hana instead, uh, like this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes white will want to force with, with this um, change instead. Um, so uh, white plays here. It's, it's not a big deal. It is a gain in territory. And then white jumps out. That's nice. Um, and black slides. So at this point, um, just to show you what happened in the game, it seems natural for white to play the 3-3 three, three point. Mm -hmm. uh, but this attachment turned out to be a really sharp move. And I'll talk about why later. But um, I'll go back to here. And I'm, I'm going to say white should have played the peak here. This is a really important hmm. move in the eye space for both groups. And at this point, it's going to be forcing. And then white can take the corner. Mm -hmm. And black doesn't have any good moves on the side now after after that exchange. Like playing on the side suddenly is less attractive. So black will probably move out into the center. And then again, this move is another good move. It's a good, the Hane underneath next is going to be big. Um, so white virtually already has a living shape now. And black is not completely alive. So this would keep white in the game if you ask me. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot better for white than the actual game. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, you know, this move here um, sort of takes you by surprise. Uh, like, it looks sort of weird. And white wants to play here. Um, but um, black uh, can give white very heavy shape here. Like, this, this white group on the left is has no eyes at all. And black is alive now. Black is alive right. with that moment corner. And has a weakness at B that black can play next. So it's going to be very difficult for white to finish uh, this territory on the right side. It's, um, black has that. Um, why don't I add? Um, there's another weakness here. Um, so black has B and C to look at. And the, the group that, um, that I've marked with A is a weak group that black can threaten. Um, and white cannot afford to throw away. So it's going to be very difficult for white to build on this moyo. In fact, the, the side could disappear. Mm. Um, with Starting with a peep at, at C, black could probably trash the side there. So this is looking very difficult wow. for white. And so that's the ex explanation of why this move is um, is a very forceful move, actually, in this case. And white just played capped immediately. So this is actually a pretty light way to play. Mm. Uh, so it's interesting. But then again, this is a very strong move. Um, wedging here. Like if white uh, played this, white would usually try to save the stone that way. But you see, white has two cutting points. Would probably play on the top. And again, um, this this is a lifeless group. It's a, um, a group without eye space. Mm. Black chase out into the center. So this is going to be a good way for black to. Um, again, it'll be a way for black to reduce the right side area, mm -hmm. um, because white has to deal with that group on the upper side. And you can see in this case, black is already alive. So that makes it easy for black. Black's alive on the upper side. So white plays here. So this is a better move. And um, black extends. So this is a natural exchange here. And it looks like white mm. broke through the black stone. So you might think it's OK. Um, yeah, but I've okay. marked up the board a little bit just to show how much territory black has. Um, that area is about 60 points now. Wow. Wow, 60 up there oh, 60. plus. Just, just on the marked line. So there's there could be more in the center. And then there's so about there's four, the four, four, There's like, what, 40 on the bottom between the two things on the bottom, right? 10 and 40? You mean black's territory? Yeah. Well, black has 60 in the upper left. And then these two are, they add up to about 15 points. OK. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, white, white virtually has to surround the right side um, on the seventh line or something. So uh, that's what white is <laughs> going to try to do. Um, like this, this move is on the eighth line. So white is trying to do that. 
Um, but white also has to um, consider the fact that black has some potential extra territory in the center. Uh, so it's going to be really difficult. Like white has to surround on the seventh line and also keep black from making any extra profit in the center of the board. So if this was a reality show and he could call a friend, maybe maybe white could call Takamiya. <laughs> Takamiya, yeah. Uh, it's a Takamiya type game. Um, he's he's pretty good at um, and and actually this move looks pretty good. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe he did, yeah. Um, and black comes in. <laughs> and there's no way White's going to be able to kill this stone. No. Um, uh, uh, but Master tries a little bit. And, you know, here um, Zero is starting to get fancy. Um, and I don't really understand why it would play this peep at this, at this, with this timing. Like, if it wanted to peep here, uh, maybe it should have done it earlier in the game. And it very often does play this peep fairly early in the game. Mm -hmm. um, Just to so exchange sort of it. That comes now because at this point it looks a bit dangerous. Yeah, it uh, seems yeah, with the connection would be a good exchange usually. But but now can't white can white doesn't have to yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and this is there's a lot of bad Aji. Um various things black can try inside the Moyo because there's a cutting point there. But of course cutting immediately was is not gonna work. Right. Um and so, and white doesn't really have anything to lose because there's no way white's going to win by territory at this point. Mm -hmm. And so it's natural that white plays the strongest move here. And then black pushes out. And um, it's really interesting the way that um, zero is going to use this peep. Like if white plays the honey here, I think black is just going to um, peep here now. And because of that exchange, of these two, uh, let's mark the two stones. Just because of this marked exchange that Black has added in, White really has to answer that. Mm -hmm. And Black's gonna escape in the center. So there's right. no way that White can capture these stones, even though it's bad shape. So uh, Master backs up a little bit here. And um, it's it's not really enough territory, but there, there mm. doesn't seem to be much choice for White. And there's some potential for it to get fairly close. So at this point, I'm thinking that black has that 75 points and white is surrounding mostly on the sixth line um, on the right side mm -hmm. and um, has a little extra um, bit of territory in the lower lower right area. So um, the territory is maybe pretty close, but black's going to get some extra territory in the center. And yeah. I'm thinking this is I'm I'm very I'm very dubious. I mean, it just I mean, black would have to, yeah, yeah. So white is attacking here, and you know all those white stones floating around on the sixth line there are acting as uh, ladder breaking moves. So, mm. uh, for instance, this this stone here is breaking the ladder. So mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I can do that, and um, <laughs> well, this is forcing, but you know, uh, I would be really worried doing this stuff at this timing because um, what what happens if white plays here? And, you know, I just don't know. Like, like black might be trying something like this um, in combination with the cut. But this is going to be so complicated that I, I don't even feel that I can make a diagram for you. Mm. Uh, mm. It, it's mm. so complicated, I, I don't feel comfortable trying to explain what's going on. Right, but what's your 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 feeling is is that black should be okay somehow in there, right? Is that well, black would be okay if black played um, a bit more safely, for instance. <laughs> uh, for <laughs> instance, with this, move, black could play here. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Right. And black would be connected already, so black would be able to do stuff like this and then do stuff like this, uh, or maybe just do that immediately. But and there's a getta, there's a getta there, there's a net to capture the one white stone. Yeah, yeah. And white three stones in the center are weak. And so it should be easy for black. Yeah. And yeah. black black does have enough territory. So this would be an easy way to deal with it. And uh, zero seems to be doing it in a very difficult manner. Um, like white answered that. Um, and then here. Um, now this is threatening the cut on the right. Mm -hmm. So white crawl. So this makes sense. Um, for the time being, the cut is is not there. Like if let, let's just add that the cut will be answered here. White has to answer on the right. Right. Um, but then when this happens, um, black has to pull back. So so it's not going to work for the time being. Right. 
So that's the meaning of white crawling underneath. Um, and now I'm still expecting black to do something like this. And you see, again, this move is uh, threatening both B and C. So if black plays this way, it's going to be easy for black to escape. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, but then, you know, this kind of stuff. Now, this <laughs> is um, threatening the white stone in the center. Sure. And it's gaining some extra territory for black. Um, but when white answers like this in the center, it's changing the situation in the center. There's a, there, that's an extra move white's played in the center that makes the difference. Um, so black has to be careful, I think. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. So this is the point where um, zero plays in a way that really worries me. Um, because I, th I still think that black has a slight advantage if black just carefully plays this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then plays here. So this pushes a kind of a very important move. And again, black is threatening to get some profit in the center. So I think white would answer that. And then um, zero can start doing this kind of stuff. And it'll be more difficult for white to kill this. Like if white answers the normal way, then black's already connected up. Mm. And so black would have one eye in this variation also. So um, and there would be some potential to um, still move out with that one stone, the cutting stone in the center. Right. So this is this is going to be difficult for white to continue with. So this is the kind of thing that I would like to be seeing, or I would be thinking of doing on my own. Um, but you know, zero just pushes immediately. Um, so the way zero is handing handling this looks really dangerous to me. So the, my big question here is, what happens if white cuts? I um, yes, I was good because I was thinking I must be hallucinating that because because black hasn't pushed out the cut works or at least that's what it looks like it works. It, maybe. It's, it's sort of complicated. Um, <laughs> but, um, the point is that when when master played here after this um, zero starts um, simplifying the game and it, and it just finishes the game off. Ah. So I think this was this was sort of uh, math. Master's last chance to fight it out. And Black's going to start maybe with this move. I think Black's going to, or at least I'm going to put this move in because it's kind of a key move in a lot of the variations. But after this, um, Black sort of, Black would like to push through here. Now, now this is the um, variation that Black is trying to make work because White cuts here and Black has these forcing moves in the center and can push through here. Um, and then cut here, and we can see black is going after those two white stones. But actually, in this, when black immediately does it, it's not working uh, because B and C are me I. Um, maybe we need some more moves. Like if black plays here, white plays here, and you can see th these stones are an Atari, so that's not working. And there's no way for white to capture the three stones. Like this would be, um, black would be losing the whole whole group and mm. a lot of stuff in the center too. So this would be a, uh, a win for white actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just to go back, um, at this point, that's what black would like to make work. And um, I'm going to show you how I think it might work. Like if white answers that, um, if white answers it on this side, now that uh, same sequence there is going to work for black. Uh, so now, if white tries the same, obviously if white just takes the one stone, black's going to take two white stones. So th this would be good for black. White's lower side group would be in danger. Mm -hmm. This would be okay for black. Um, it would be a reasonable result. Um, and, but actually white can push through. Uh, in this case, white cannot push um, because when this happens, uh, black gets the cut here. Mm. And so this is going to be bad news for white. Like if uh, this would be... Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. So, so it turns out that's not going to work for white. So just to go back, so that's the meaning of black uh, playing here to take the one stone, is trying to get some extra liberties for that black group in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, so as to make that um, this move work. But actually, white can connect on this side, and it doesn't seem to be working for black to me. Like mm -hmm. black can be uh, uh, in the sequence in the center, um, so that's a forcing move. Um, but 
uh, White's going to win the semi. Like White has something like um, six a billion, liberties. A, a billion liberties. <laughs> yeah, already six liberties. Black only has about four liberties. Yeah. And going back to this point, um, let's go back to here. Um, so this is a kind of a key point. But if yeah. Black, um, instead of playing here, if Black plays something like this, then White can um, can afford to put another stone in here because uh, Black's not going to get two eyes like this. This mm. point, this point, or me eye, um, and so Black doesn't have enough room to make two eyes. So I don't really see what Zero intends to do with this when White cuts here. I just can't find any good variation for White for Black. Wow. Uh, so you know, this is the move that I think Zero seems to be heading towards. Um, but it's just, it's not working. Wow. Not in so, you so think... this seems to be Masters' last chance to win the game. Wow. And, I, you know, maybe I just uh, couldn't find Zero's reading in this case. Um, but it doesn't seem to be working. I mean, it seems fairly straightforward. I mean, I mean you know, I mean, it's not, it, it's not like there's a special move. There's very few choices that Black has. Yeah. Uh, in this, like otherwise, there would be um, pushing through here, but you know this this doesn't look like it's enough room for Black to make a living shape um, inside the white moyo. Like even if you just have, it's pretty um, doubtful, right? Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't look like it's enough room. So I'm I'm just failing to find a good variation for Black. Interesting. Yeah. So we have to ask AlphaGo, I guess. And so in the game, white extended, but after this, it gets uh, it relatively simple and straightforward because at this point, um, now it becomes much like that variation I was showing you where white cuts and black pushes through here. It's going to be a different story this time. Black will have more room to um, make trouble for white. And I think I, I, my guess is that this black group would live. Uh -huh. um, black does have a forcing move here which threatens white in the center. Like if white plays underneath, then black can play like this. And this this is going to be troublesome for white. So mm. um, this kind of stuff can happen. Um, otherwise, black, uh, with that forcing move, um, let's see, I'm still in the right. With this forcing move, like if white answers it here, then black already has an eye there in the center. So it's, mm -hmm. it's looking pretty promising for black. So this is a variation that I would not be willing, to, I wouldn't be happy as white in this variation. No, I mean, black is completely lived good. in your area, yeah. And so I think white has to answer this sequence. But after this, it's, it just becomes very easy for black because black can add this, finally add this one move to connect up. And everything has worked perfectly. Like um, zero is like that. It, it's, it seems to go for the, um, most effective, uh, it seems a bit greedy sometimes. It, it, it goes through the most effective variation. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually it works. But there was one game, I think, where Master killed a bit, big dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe Zero makes some mistakes after all. But why would why would going for the most effective thing, why would you call that greedy? Well, like it didn't have to try this hard, I don't think. I think Black had a, uh, other ways, I see. Other safer, ways that look safer to me, at least, mm -hmm. uh, to win. But it, it, it's um, in this way, it's going to win by a larger margin. It's going to win by a fairly sizable margin mm -hmm. by playing this. So it's not like the KJ version that, um, like those half points. Right. Most of the time, zero is winning by a much larger margin. And so we're, um, yeah, the moment white plays that end game, it's a pretty big end game move here on, in the lower right corner um, because that would be a, a sente move for black too. So that was big, um, but it wasn't exactly sente. So black plays here and these forcing moves in the center. Um, and you, see, you can see again, uh, that territory that I was calling uh, 60 points, black already has something like 10 extra points on it. Right. So black's getting some extra territory and white's still trying to attack black, but it's not really working out. Um, and again, uh, Zero, it's getting a little fancy here, cutting white off here. Um, and Master is still trying to get an attack here, but it's not really working. Um, 
it's getting closer to maybe working. Like at this point, it looks like white can get a call by playing here. In fact, white can get a call. But Zero's not worried about that call because um, the, I'll show you the call I'm talking about. First of all, black can play these moves to really get rid of most of white's territory. So it, it, this is something like what white's territory is going to look like. And actually, Zero might be playing those moves as co threats because mm. it, when black plays here, this is going to be a call. And this co also looks very difficult for white to win when black has co threats such as this one. Um, so it's just not working for white because the loss on the right side is too big. Mm. And white doesn't really have any good good enough co threats. Um, so uh, to go back to the game. So at this point, it's, it's looking pretty one sided um, for zero and master is starting to play some moves that um, don't really like that cut and upper. It looks like masters um, sort of fishing around for co threats, maybe, but it doesn't have any good co threats. Mm. Um, and starting, it's starting to uh, get a bit strange here. Um, and none of this is working. And then this again, I think Master is trying to manufacture some co threats here, mm. but Zero can just play this. And finally, the group is safe. Like, this is a move that Zero could have played at any point. Um, but now it plays it, it's, it's completely alive. Um, and also, it's sort of forcing against White on the right. Um, and this is just pointless for white. So, so this is where the game ends. Um, mm. So it was a resignation. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. So on the whole, I think uh, Master was not doing so well in this game, but there was that position in center, which, which really looked like a, a decisive chance for Master um, to take the game back. Well, there's a couple of odd things about this game. I mean, there's there's the whole you know sort of a abandoned you know early invasion oh, yeah. and that yeah yeah and and then and, and but then this this play that you just went through just i don't know it seems very i mean it's always mysterious right we sort, right. sort of granted but it seems extra mysterious and i'm, and I'm i gotta tell you i'm I'm disturbed that you can't find a refutation for the cut there. I, you know, I was looking, I was looking at that cut, and I just assumed that it doesn't work because of something that I didn't see. But if you can't find it, then I'm, I'm gonna say I'm pretty confident it's not there. So then it doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. Well, it could be that I, uh, I just couldn't find it. Like, mm. um, Zero is a very strong player, obviously. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, um, but Zero does all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, when it invades its opponent's, uh, well, moyos, you might say, or uh -huh. potential territories. Uh, it does a lot of crazy stuff inside the territories. Um, and in some of the games coming up, I think it's maybe game number seven or something, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be able to give you a pretty good explanation of how it's working. Okay. And so when, it, when I can't explain it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think. Thank but you. in this That's... case, I, I think Zero might have been making a mistake, and I, I sort of disappointing Master didn't uh, call it on that one. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I guess we, as you say, we we just don't see a whole lot uh, of them. Um, but it also had a bit of a bit of a taste of, um, you know, that, that I think as you're saying that that uh, Zero likes to sort of wrap it up, just like Master did as well. Yeah, you know, when it's when it's ahead. So interesting. Well, finally it did. Yeah, after that <laughs> fight in the center ended, it did play very, um, actually very effective end game moves, but at the yeah. same time simplifying the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, exciting, um, exciting game, and very, uh, really interesting. And it's so uh, fun to me that there's a series of them that have this you know, identical opening, which enables and it reminds me. Uh, we can just finish up with this uh, little uh, history thing, but you know, back in the day, wasn't that something that they do where they kind of had uh, sort of set pieces for openings that kind of jump into the game? Wasn't that a thing? Am I misremembering that? Um, well, are, you're not talking about the, the ancient Chinese um, two stone, four stone uh, opening where they had uh, star points diagonally. 
But yeah, but I thought I thought there was some. Maybe it was in in uh, way long ago with the Japanese games where they sort of play out, and it wasn't just Seki so much. Well, as... uh, when they had um, when they had study games, often, ah. they would have um, like uh, I think Dosaku and Suwa. Su- a lot of the Hoimbo family who uh, where we have records left behind of some of their study games. They would play mm-hmm. study games um, against the same student, uh, same person. And they would start all of the games with the same opening. Like you can okay, find that's... 20, 25 games with the same opening, just because right. they they wanted to work out that opening, maybe. Okay, that's uh, I, I knew you would be able to, uh, as long as I wasn't actually hallucinating this. If, if, I had a, <laughs> if I had a little piece of it, you would you would be able to set it straight. But yeah, so you know, and it's I mean that's what this is reminding me of. So you start out with this, and then you know it's kind of cool because you get to look at all these different variations uh, and see what happens. So. Well, all sorts of different stuff happens after that. And um, we're going to have some some games where I think Master has a very good opening. I mean, I mean with the follow-up after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, there's some games where actually I think Master has a lead. But in this game, I think, on the whole, it was a difficult game for Master. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I felt bad for Master. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, well, I have to say, you know, first of all, as always, thanks very much, Michael. This is uh, really exciting. And again, uh, really appreciate uh, all the uh, the comments from folks. Keep those coming. I do read them, uh, pass them along to Michael, and I think they're useful. Uh, but also, you know, with this latest development with the chess and Shogi, uh, you know, with the, uh, uh, you know, the folks at DeepMind, um, you know, it's really good to see they are definitely not resting on their laurels and continuing to really uh, press on. It's it's a very exciting time uh, for us. So uh, thanks very much, Michael. Uh, just one last thing before we go. I want to give another big thanks to all our uh, AGA members who uh, make videos like this possible. And if you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. Thanks and see you next week.